Travel across America with me, Biscayne National Park, South to Key West, or Everglades National Park. Yes, yes, yes. But in this video, let's head south on US-1 to Key West. The Florida Keys Overseas Heritage Trail is a 90-mile multi-use trail that links the Keys, offering visitors a spectacular way to experience the islands. It's open to fishermen, pedestrians, and bicyclists. Or if you're just driving down the highway, you can pull over at the different waysides. And that's exactly what we did. This map gives you all the stops from the city of Key West to where it turns off from the Keys at North Key Largo. Let's first look at some general information about this heritage trail. And one of the things that I will be focusing on in this video are the historic bridges. You will not believe what you are going to see. Before the city of Miami existed, Henry Flagler envisioned a railroad across the sea that would promote a cultural and economic connection with Cuba, the Panama Canal, and South America. By 1905, Flagler had begun construction on the key section of his Florida East Coast Railroad. On January 22, 1912, Flagler rode the railroad to Key West, where the project was heralded by the press as the eighth wonder of the world. A crowd of nearly 10,000 people filled the streets of Key West for a week-long celebration of this momentous occasion. The railroad transformed the wilderness of the Florida Keys into an economically viable destination. Woohoo! Today, the historic Flagler Bridges form the backbone of the Florida Keys Overseas Heritage Trail, providing opportunities for fishing, sightseeing, recreation, and historical reflection. All 23 Flagler Railroad Bridges are listed on the National Register of Historic Places. I'm glad they did this. In 1997, a task force was created to preserve the bridges and open them for pedestrian and recreational use. The Florida Keys would not be the vacation destination they are today if it weren't for the vision of Henry Flagler. Henry Flagler saw the benefit of connecting Key West with the rest of the country after construction of the Panama Canal began. It was then that he decided to expand his railroad from Miami through the Florida Keys. He knew this would not be an easy feat and was told by many engineers that it could not be done. You know, that's one of those things that when you're told you can't do it, it just motivates you all the more, doesn't it? Not easily deterred, Henry Flagler finally found someone who also believed his vision, project engineer James Meredith. It would take seven years, over $50 million, which is $1.25 billion, in 2019 dollars and 17 million cubic yards of material placed on the right-of-way to see his vision become a reality. At any given time, there were more than 4,000 men working to build the railroad. During construction, three hurricanes passed through the Keys. Those pesky hurricanes. The railroad remained in operation until the Labor Day hurricane in 1935. That means it didn't last too long. The hurricane ripped through the Florida Keys with winds estimated at 200 miles per hour. It is considered the most intense hurricane to make landfall in the U.S. After the hurricane, there was some damage, but the railroad remained mostly intact. Due to the high cost of building and maintaining the railroad, the company chose to sell the railroad to the state of Florida and Monroe County for $640,000. Um, I'm not sure what the math was I said a few minutes ago, but it seems like they took a loss. The process to convert the railroad into highway had already begun. In 1938, the Overseas Highway opened. Yippee! It is a great road, and yes, it's only two lane in places, but it flows fairly well. Yes, you're in a rush to get there, but getting there is part of the fun. Back to the information. As new bridges replaced the original railroad bridges, the historic bridges were unused. In 1979, the third longest historic railroad bridges were listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Long Key Channel, Knight's Key, Seven Mile, and Baha'i Honda Channel. Wait till you see the Baha'i Honda Channel channel bridge. Wait till you see it in person. Now, let's make a stop at Windley Key Fossil Reef Geological State Park. When we went there, it was unattended and we just walked around and saw some of the signs and what I thought was interesting is its connection to the railroad. During the construction of the Overseas Railroad, the coral rock of Windley Key was used simply as rock fill, extracted by steam shovel. However, it was soon discovered that the fossilized coral would also be sliced and polished for use as decorative stone. But first, they needed to devise a way to remove the rock and slab form. Quarry workers first extracted slabs by drilling holes close together in the coral, then breaking the slabs away from the walls. 
Later, a chiseling machine was used that made smoother cuts. I'm gonna interrupt myself. Everything that's geographic and gorgeous has a historical component. And I hope that you can begin to appreciate the historical component of all these places that we travel across America. This channeling machine worked by chiseling two parallel grooves into the coral. When enough channels were cut in one direction, the entire machine and its tracks were repositioned to cut at right angles to the first pattern of channels, producing a checkerboard pattern in the coral. Each slab weighed up to 10 tons. And you can just walk through there freely and see the coral, see the fossils, and see this old equipment. We're not gonna make any stops because the sites on the way back up the Overseas Heritage Trail will be made after our stop in Key West. You will certainly want to go watch the video I did on why key lime in your pie. We found the best key lime pie in Key West. You'll want to go to Kermit's when you get to Key West. I want to recommend you watch the must-see historical sites in Key West. Did you know that there's a little White House down there? And you can see one of Truman's Lincoln limousines. Simply incredible history down in Key West. But now for our trip back out of Key West on the Overseas Highway with stops along the Heritage Trail. We stopped at the Kemp Channel Historic Bridge. It's between mile marker 20 and mile marker 25. And then traveling approximately 10 more miles, we pulled over at the Spanish Harbor Historic Bridge and Boat Ramp. Some people were fishing, but our goal was to walk down to see the Baha'i Honda Historic Bridge. Sometimes it's really cool to see things in their crumbling state. It just gives a different dimension and a unique perspective. Before being reused as a highway bridge, the Baha'i Honda Rail Bridge carried a single track of FEC across Big Spanish Channel from Baha'i Honda Key to Spanish Harbor Key. Unlike other bridges on the overseas railway, the Baha'i Honda has a steel truss construction. This was a necessary difference from the predominant concrete arch form of the other bridges of the overseas railroad as the channel is the deepest of those spanned at 24 feet. The central span is a Parker truss with a span of 247 feet. Nine plate girder sections were used for the western approach for a total length of 5,055 feet. That's almost a mile, because isn't there 5,280 feet in a mile? The Baha'i Honda Rail Bridge is the longest pin connected truss bridge in the United States. We did make a stop at Henry Morrison Flagler Museum. It is a gorgeous estate and a wonderful museum. I've heard it's one of the best, but we were on a quick trip and were not able to do more than see this incredible, gorgeous mansion. In 1912, Henry Flagler rode the first train into Key West marking the completion of the Florida East Coast Railway's Oversea Railroad connection to Key West and the linkage by railway of the entire East Coast of Florida. That was quite an accomplishment. When Flagler had visited Florida in 1878, he recognized the state's potential for growth, but noticed a lack of hotel facilities. Flagler returned to Florida and in 1885 began building a grand St. Augustine Hotel, the Hotel Ponce de Leon. Do you think I'm going to show you the Hotel Ponce de Leon? You'll just have to keep watching my channel to see if I do. I think I'm going to. When you travel through Miami and Palm Beach and Key West, you'll see his name attached to so many places. Rightfully so. He also built the Breakers Hotel. It is on the ocean side of Palm Beach. And this is his private 55-room, 60,000-square-foot winter home. These structures established Palm Beach as a winter resort for the wealthy members of America's Gilded Age. If you want to learn more about the Gilded Age, you will want to look into Newport, Rhode Island. In a future video, I'll take you to Newport, Rhode Island, and to see these amazing homes that you just... It's unimaginable how they were built in that time frame. Palm Beach was to be the terminus of the Flagler Railroad, but during 1894 and 1895, seven freezes hit the area, causing Flagler to rethink this original decision not to move the railroad south. To further convince Flagler to continue the railroad to Miami, he was offered land from private landowners. There is so much to learn about Flagler and this railroad. But his greatest challenge was the extension of the Florida East Coast Railway to Key West. It was a city of almost 20 
60,000 inhabitants. It was located 128 miles beyond the end of Florida Peninsula. Flagler became particularly interested in linking Key West to the mainland after the United States announced in 1905 the construction of the Panama Canal. Nearly a century later, the effects of Henry Flagler's incredible accomplishments can still clearly be seen throughout Florida, and that's what I had just mentioned. Between mile marker 60 and mile marker 35 on the Florida Keys Overseas Heritage Trail, you will find Grassy Key to Spanish Harbor Key, and this is where you will find Baha'i Honda State Park on the north end of the Baha'i Honda Bridge. The nature trail to the historic Baha'i Honda Bridge provides a scenic overlook and photo opportunity, and that is at the northern end of the bridge. It's at the southern end that we stopped to see and to gather these incredible photographs. Have you subscribed yet? If not, why not? And if you have, thank you. Simply incredible. Wouldn't you have loved to have seen that railroad going across there? And even better yet, wouldn't you have loved to ride that railroad to Key West? I certainly would have. Last stop, the Wayside Rest Area. I always like to try and stop at as many historical markers as possible and read them. Do you remember geography class when you learned about Ponce de Leon? Juan Ponce de Leon was born in San Service, Spain in 1460. He had served in the Spanish army and had accompanied Christopher Columbus on his second voyage in 1491. He was appointed governor of Haiti in 1511 and governor of Puerto Rico in 1512. His wife and daughters lived in a beautiful home in Puerto Rico called Casa Blanca. Ah, I want to see that. On May 5th, 1513, he sailed through the Florida Keys, calling them Los Mantines. In 1521, during his second voyage, he was shot by an arrow and returned to Cuba, where he died. Wow, that was a pretty informative marker. Next sign, rafters. This plaque is in memory of the many Cubans who were desperate to leave Castro's communist Cuba. They left their homes and families trying to cross the 90 miles of sea in rafts, intertubes, or anything that would float. Not knowing what rough seas and storms would be encountered, hundreds or even thousands were lost and never heard from again. This is in memory of those who lost their lives and those who made it to this country. Spanish treasure fleet of 1733. Interesting. On Friday, July 13, 1733, the Spanish treasure fleet, under the command of General Don Rodrigo de Torres Morales, sailed from Havana Harbor, for Spain. The fleet of 21 ships was loaded with gold and silver, Peruvian gold and artifacts from Portobello, and those from the Pacific at Veracruz. On the 14th, the Armada found itself in a severe hurricane just off the Florida Keys. By the next morning, the fleet was scattered from Duck Key to just above Key Largo. Only one ship was still afloat. The remains of four of these galleons, the San Pedro, Larry, San Francisco, and the Almirante, can be seen today off Lower Mate Cumbe. This disaster killed hundreds of people and wrecked the Spanish Navy, although most of the treasure was recovered. I bet so. Whole lot of history, folks. And you just thought we were going to be looking at mangroves and the Gulf and the Pacific? No, 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 no. We're going to learn a lot more and see a lot more because it's flip-flops on the ground. Unclassic road trip. Thank you.